The film started with a woman who worked as a dominatrix in an adult website called Fantasy Inc. After finishing the live stream, this woman named Kathleen Brazewood left the room and went out of there. In another place, there was a female writer named Grace Miller who was promoting her latest book which told about the murder of a woman. He received a positive response from the audience who were there. Soon he left the event and went somewhere. Grace went to Kath's house who turned out to be her sister. They talked about each other's lives. Kath was a widow who once had a child, where she wanted to take custody of her child back from her ex-husband. He admitted that he was currently working as a language teacher at a high school. In a mini market, a male detective named Ed Jennings was seen buying coffee and tea. When suddenly a robber tried to take money from the cashier and detective who will pay for the coffee. The detective then dropped his wallet, and when the robber was off guard he immediately attacked him. A detective's friend named Ben entered, and they called the police. They both left the convenience store. Kath made it clear that she meant for Grace to come over to the house. Kath intended to use their house together as collateral to get the funds used to take care of the custody of their child, Kevin. Someone was seen hacking into the adult website where Kath works. He took all the information the site had and searched Kath's house based on information from the internet. The next day Kath went to teach at a high school and Grace stayed home to write. While she was writing, Grace heard the voice of a man sawing. He finally visited the man's house and got acquainted. The man was the detective we previously saw preventing a robbery at a convenience store. Ed also knows Grace because he reads a book written by her. Grace called Kath and said she was having dinner with Ed. Later that night, Kath, who was alone in the house, got a call from the admin to put on a show. He immediately went into the room and took a gun that did not know what it was used for. Grace was seen having dinner with Ed and they seemed to be getting along. They chatted about the murder case written by Grace. Meanwhile, Kath was doing a show and suddenly someone sneaks in. After spending time with Ed, Grace returned home. How shocked and devastated Grace was to see Kathleen lying on the floor. He then ran crying to Ed's house. Ed finally went to Kathleen's house and saw her body. Soon the police arrived. Ed, who was actually on leave, couldn't help but solve the case because Kathleen was his neighbor and Grace's sister he was dating. Another police officer who was Ed's friend interrogates Grace about the suspect. Grace said it could be Jonathan Brazewood, Grace's ex-husband. Ed also asked about Grace's client on the Fantasy Inc. site. Grace didn't know that her sister had been working as a dominatrix all this time. Grace, who did not want to stay alone after the incident, finally asked for permission to stay at Ed's house. The next morning when she woke up, Grace said if she wanted to help in the case of her sister murder which Ed was now working on. She then wanted to go back home to get some things. Many reporters were gathered in the yard when Grace and Ed walked into the house. After going inside the house and picking up her things, Grace went to Kathleen's room upstairs. Grace asked Ed how his sister died based on the evidence found on her body. Ed said that Kath had been targeted all this time. Then a flashback was seen in which the killer entered through the back door then went to Kath's room. Then the killer attacked Kath who had just finished performing and was about to take a shower. Kath tried to fight back until she was strangled to death. After that, Ed and his partner, Ben go to the office of Fantasy Inc. which was the owner of the adult site where Kathleen works. They asked for all of Kathleen's recorded sessions as well as a list of her clients. After that they left the Fantasy Inc. office and returned to headquarters. Grace went to the school where Kathleen teaches. There he met Kath's students as well as the principal. An officer named Billy brought a box containing the items in Kath's locker. When going home, Grace met a student of Kath named Gerald Baxter who said that Kath had an argument with a janitor named Billy. That's why Grace met Billy who turned out to know Kath's profession as Desiree in Fantasy Inc. from his cousin who works as a camera operator on the site. Billy admitted that he only warned Kay to be careful, but Kath scolded Billy instead. Then Kath went to see Ed at the police station and told Ed about Billy and his cousin, Richie. Ed and Ben then went to Richie's house. Richie admitted that he only leaked information about Desiree to Billy alone. After that Ed returned home and spoke to Grace. 
Ed didn't want Grace to interfere in his case, but Grace insists because it was a case of his sister's death. Grace finally cried in Ed's arms. Before long, a man who was watching the show by Dominatrix named Roxanne whose real name is Carol Hayes. While performing she was attacked by someone to death. The culprit was the person who also killed Kathleen with the shoe size of 11. The man who was watching named Mark reported the incident which was seen through the camera, and then he was interrogated by the police. Elsewhere, Grace met Jonathan and talked about her suspicions about her sister's ex-husband. Jonathan said that he found out about Kath's side job and called her a prostitute. Hearing this Grace got angry and slapped Jonathan. Then Kath's death ceremony was held in the presence of many people including Ed, Jonathan, and others. After the ceremony, Grace met Ed and she still insisted that Jonathan was the culprit. Ed didn't care and left Grace. When Grace returned to the church she met Gerald who was looking at Kath's body. Then came the senator who was Gerald's mother. After returning to the house Grace reads some condolence cards and one of them says that Desiree was now already in the place that she should belong. Grace immediately took the card to the police station and asked the captain or police coach to make her an advisor on the case. The captain agreed and asked Ed to give her the access he needed. Then based on the investigation it was discovered that the card came from a rose that was sent to the church. They immediately went to someone's house based on the address of the credit card used to order the flowers. The credit card turned out to be owned by Rand Morgan's father who was also a student of Kath. Rand's characteristics were the same as those of the culprit. Rand's father said that when it happened, Rand was at home. Grace was suspicious of Rand because he had said that Kath used to be harsh on him. Despite suspecting Rand, they have no evidence, so they leave the Rand family home. Not long after, there was another attack on a dominatrix from Fantasy Incorporated, named Bethany. Luckily Bethany was able to resist and managed to injure the culprit with a knife. Ed, Ben and the captain who are discussing the Kath case and Carol immediately go to the location after hearing reports of Bethany's assault. The police then interrogated Bethany who then explained the characteristics of the culprit. She said that the culprit was a teenager and was wearing a luxurious gold watch. Hearing this, Ed and his colleagues immediately went to Rand Morgan's house and searched his room. They find Rand's computer that was accessing a Fantasy Inc. website, shoes and other evidence such as the wound on Rand's hand. Rand said that when the incident happened he was outside and walking in the park. They then brought in Rand as the culprit. Grace who heard this immediately looked for Billy and asked if there was anything he had not said. Billy then said that Richie and Rand were dating. Grace went to the police station and interrupted Ed, Ben and the captain's conversation, who suspected Rand of being the culprit based on the evidence. Grace then said that Rand was not the culprit. After that, Grace met the owner of Fantasy Incorporated and talked about Desiree's character. The owner said that she couldn't find anyone else to be Desiree. Grace finally had the idea to replace her sister as Desiree to trap the culprit. That night, she met Ed at his house. Ed also said that actually he didn't want Grace to be involved in the case because he could go crazy if something happened to Grace. They ended up spending the night together. The next morning, they both got a message for a meeting an hour later. After arriving at the office they held a meeting. Ed conveyed his investigation about Jonathan who turned out to be involved in illegal investments and may be related to Kathleen's murder. The next two planned murders were carried out by others imitating Kathleen's case. Grace suggested the idea to be Desiree to lure the culprit. The captain agreed, and Grace began to become Desiree in Fantasy Incorporated. Ed and Ben then interrogated the students at the school for more information. During martial arts class, Rand and Gerald fought where Gerald managed to twist Rand. In the locker room the two of them clash because Rand found out that Gerald was obsessed with Kathleen. Ed and Ben who were at the cafe get news that Rand was now in the ICU because he was attacked by Gerald. They immediately went to Rand who said that Gerald was angry when Rand mentioned Kathleen, who was actually Desiree. They finally realized that all this time the evidence against Rand had been pointing at Gerald. Gerald himself was having dinner with his mother who was a senator. 
the mother was worried about Gerald's psychological condition after Kathleen's death. Gerald told mother that he had no problems and was no longer sad. Before long, the captain came to Grace who was already in costume and was about to put on a show. The captain said they had found the culprit, Gerald Baxter. They have also gathered evidence to arrest him. Ed and the other cops went to Senator Baxter's house, but they didn't find Gerald there. Grace, who was still in the performance room, turned on the camera. As expected, Gerald had come to kill her. Gerald also admitted that he killed Desiree because he didn't like Kathleen who was loving and caring to be like her mother who liked to control her. Gerald's confession was recorded in a live stream and used as evidence against him. Knowing this, Gerald immediately attacked Grace. They also fought, and at the last moment, when Gerald almost killed Grace, Ed came and shot Gerald. Dot at the end of the movie, Grace and Ed are seen spending romantic time together. Such a lovely mystery movie, right? If you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Full Movie Recap channel. Press the bell button to get notified with our new video. See you later.